Hi there. So this is Professor Miller, and I'm going to be your general chemistry two instructor and your lab instructor. So this time, if, uh, if you've taken general chemistry one here, you may have had a different lab teacher because we have many more sections of Gen Chem one than we do for Gen Chem two. Um, so it's a little bit different in Gen Chem two because the lab is only me um, and we're going to have a monitor around to help us, depending which lab you're in, the monitor might be different. Um, their job is basically just to make sure that if there's a lab accident, somebody professional is nearby. I'm still the only one really who's gonna like answer your specific questions about the procedures or techniques or things like that. Um, you can ask them, of course, they're very helpful, but if they don't know, don't be surprised that you have to wait for me to come and talk to you. One thing that's different this semester in the lab is there are going to be iPads at the stations so that you can text in Zoom during lab to ask questions, to sh share your video of what you're doing or um, things like that. The voice chat's not gonna work very well in the lab because it's really, really loud, but um, we're hoping that at least having some text options available will allow you to collaborate with each other as well as get better answers from me. In addition to that, we also have put in a speaker system. So now um, um, you'll be hopefully be able to hear me better during lab. Um, so I can answer some questions verbally as well. Okay, um, for lab, you should know that you are going to be coming every week, unless the college gets shut down, of course. but for the moment anyway, uh, we'll be going every single week and you should be planning to stay the whole time. So in Gen Chem 1, you were given kind of like a recipe to follow and you kind of just did the steps in the procedure. And Gen Chem 2 is quite different from that. You you can watch the video about how the qualitative analysis scheme works, but all except four of your lab experiments, so that's about 10 weeks of work, are going to be largely independent. So you will be in a different place in the procedure from anyone else in the, in the room. And that's okay, that's more like what actual science work is like. Um, so at any rate, make sure you watch the video about the quant qualitative analysis scheme. Um, it's in course documents in Blackboard. I'll just show you here. It's in the course documents. Um, so I just, I should tell you uh, that I'm assuming you took Gen Chem 1 here at MV. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over how to use Blackboard or Zoom or those kinds of things. I'm kind of assuming you know that. If that is not true in your specific case, maybe you took, took Chemistry 1 somewhere else, you had AP credit, uh, maybe you didn't take it uh, remote learning style, uh, whatever your situation might be, please let me know that. Um, but looking at the roster, most of us were with me for Gen Chem 1, so I know you kind of have some background in this stuff. Um, so if you don't know how to log into Blackboard or you don't know where to go for accessing stuff like that, send me an email. My email address is amiller at mvcc.edu. So anyway, once you get into the course, uh, you're going to see our, our lab banner here. All of our announcements are going to be posted with the newest one first. I also send them to your student email account. So that's something you're going to want to be checking. I, I would recommend, you know, Monday through Friday, checking it at least once a day would be good. Um, but you'll also see the same information posted in Blackboard under announcements. There's nothing there yet because this video is going to be the first thing I post. OK, other than that, here's here's the features to look for. Let me see if I can make my laptop bigger. It's very small. OK. So on the left, this is your main navigation, and I try to simplify things a little bit, make it a little easier to find stuff maybe. You want to spend some time reading the syllabus. This has everything you need to know about this course, including what materials you need. Um, briefly, to go over that for the lecture, you're not buying anything. The code for Alex is included in your tuition and fees at a charge of $60. And that's because I need you to access it on day one. You need to go in there and start working in Alex. That's going to be our primary um, homework and testing system. So um, if you're not familiar with it, many of your colleagues in this class are, and I'm sure they can help you understand it. 
But basically, it's an adaptive system that learns what you already know and allows you to focus on what you don't know rather than doing a whole bunch of repetitive extra work. Um, so even if you took Gen Chem 1 with me and have had Alex before, you're still going to log in and take your initial knowledge check this week. It's going to review a whole bunch of topics from Gen Chem 1, um, the ones that are most important for this course. Um, and if you need to study up on any of them, you have this week to do that. So by Friday 3 p.m., that's 2, 5, 3 p.m., you have to complete the initial knowledge check, which is only about 25 or 30 questions, and any review material for the prerequisites uh, topics for the course. Okay, and so that, that, that takes a variable amount of time depending on the person. Some people don't need as much review, some people need a lot. Um, but this is to even the playing field so that we all go forward into, into the new material together. Okay, uh, it's really important to stay on track in Alex. And so part of your grade is based on participating in Alex at least three days a week uh, and for a minimum of three hours a week. I would expect it'll probably take more than that. Remember that when you take a three credit lecture, which is this course, it's expected that you would be in class normally for three hours a week, and then you would do, you would do an additional double that in homework. That's a normal college class. That's not me saying that, that's not MV, that's not even SUNY. That's a, an accreditation guideline. So it comes from the people who allow us to give degrees out. So the general guideline is three hours in lecture. Lecture meaning, you know, online work at this point, right? And that would be six hours of studying. So your total amount of time in a lecture class is going to be at least nine hours every week. It's a really good practice to block out those times on your calendar spread it out across the whole week even if you know for you that's weekends evenings whatever it is but spread it out don't spend all that time in alex all in one day okay so to encourage you to have good study habits i'm integrating a um, policy of a part of your grade is making sure you're going into alex at least three times in a week to cover all the topics for that week okay um so at any rate that's a little bit modified from last semester. Lab, again, you're going to need some materials for lab, right? So you're going to need your lab safety goggles. You're going to need an apron or a lab coat. Um, I think we still have disposable gloves for you to use. So you don't necessarily need to buy that yourself. You will need a lab notebook. So you need a notebook that will make a copy of your pages. So one example is on Amazon, but the bookstore carries the same thing for about the same price. Um, I'm glad to know I could buy a lab notebook for my Valentine if I needed to. I'm glad that they show us that right there. Um, anyway, this is one example, but essentially it copies what you write in your lab notebook and then you're going to turn that copy into me um, like as you leave lab each day so that I can keep track of where you are um, and maybe help help you along the way by spotting problems earlier than we would otherwise be able to do. The bookstore has these. I recommend you go there to get it because it'll be a lot faster than waiting until Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's just an example. They just make sure it says duplicate or carbonless copy pages. The carbon copy ones make a mess, so we don't like those. Um, Let's see, that's all you need for lab. Uh, there is a lab textbook as well. It's listed with the bookstore. It's more expensive than I feel like it's worth. It hasn't been updated in about a century, like 12 years, but whatever. Um, and so it's actually available in our Blackboard site as well. And you are also welcome to purchase it used if you'd like to. We will print chapters eight and nine for you because you're going to come into the lab and get started on day one. It's a good idea to go through the procedure and kind of understand how you're doing things before you get started, if you have a chance to. So you can find that information by going to course documents. There's Alex, by the way. It's going to always remain at the top, and then I'm going to update our to-do list uh, as we go through each week. I'll update that on Monday morning. 
So this is your to-do list this week. And then week two, this is kind of a preview. So I don't want you to do that yet. You can, you can start reading all of that. The link to the textbook, by the way, I'll add it to this. Someone remind me if I forget. The link to the textbook is in your lab, your course syllabus, okay? Um, it's an online book. The same one I used last semester, if you were with me then. So for lab stuff, you're gonna click on this pink tab because I wanted everybody to notice it. This is the same safety video as last semester. Really good idea to review it. Same contract as, as semester one. Okay. Um, go delete that one actually. You want to watch this lab safety video. This is specific to what we do in Gen Chem 2. So this is a required safety video. If you don't get to watch it before your first lab day, because that's happening tomorrow for some of us, um, that's okay, but do it as soon as possible. In week two, I'm gonna give you a safety quiz. That material will be on there as well as the first video. This guy with the dolls that catch on fire, remember that? Okay. Um, and then you also want to take a look at the information about the, those two videos look the same. I'm going to have to see if they are the same. No, they're not. They have different times. I just make the same face expressions on videos. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, going to explain to you how the qual scheme works. All right. And that's that 10 week project that you're going to be working on independently. Uh, it's very different from what you experienced in Gen Chem 1 but it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I like the aspect that um, it's kind of like real science. You get given a sample, you don't know what's in it, and you have to tell me, okay? And so it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, we have, instead of pre-labs for the qual scheme, I have reading assignments. These are graded. It's not essential that they're done before lab, before you start a chapter, but it would help you. Um, and what is essential is making sure you update the procedure, because there are some things in the reading assignment that um, modify the procedure pretty heavily. So as you're going through the reading assignment, make sure you are noting in your procedure, your actual book or the printout, uh, what needs to be changed. We will print eight and nine for you because you're gonna need it on day one. But after that, you're gonna have to either buy the textbook or print it yourself in the Learning Commons. It's also a good idea to take a look at this example of what a lab notebook should look like you're going to really develop really good lab notebook skills this semester because if you don't, you're going to end up repeating things more because we can't fix it if we don't know what happened along the way. Okay, so that's the essential items this week. You're going to do your Alex knowledge check and your prerequisite review by Friday. You're going to post a discussion post to introduce yourself and start forming some study groups. Um, go through the, the, the whole checklist in the course documents, but then you want to prepare for labs. So that's kind of the order of importance. Um, and the other items that are listed in your to-do list this week can kind of be done after those things, okay? So again, knowledge check, it's important. Do your prerequisite review, make sure that you're caught up and ready to go for the new material. Get ready for a lab, okay? And those are the most important things, really. Um, and then do your discussion post, come say hi in Discord, all that kind of thing. Okay, I look forward to the semester. Um, just so you know, I'm available all kinds of different office hours, and if they don't work for you, let me know when you can meet. Um, if it doesn't overlap with a commitment that I have, I'm happy to get on Zoom and help you out. Um, it's really important in an online course to communicate clearly with me and with your fellow classmates, because that's what's going to keep you going in the course. And the reason that we had to do completely asynchronous, if you've been wondering, is because when I surveyed people in fall, whether they needed a morning session or an evening session or an afternoon or whatever, it was all over the board. And a lot of us have jobs or kids or commitments that can't be moved. And so I made the choice to make this course asynchronous. In terms of learning, that's going to make it harder, and I'm sorry for that, but one way to make it better on yourself is to commit to coming to certain office hours each week, kind of like you would for a class, okay? So office hours are just your chance to ask me questions, to check in and make sure everything is going well, that you're turning everything in, 
um, or even to just chat about whatever. Maybe you're looking for where you want to transfer to or you're looking for scholarships or you might need a recommendation letter at some point. These are the things that I do in office hours, okay? Um, so I want to make that clear because a lot of students don't understand the phrase. Um, it's the time I'm available to help you in whatever fashion you need. Okay. So, um, yeah, we aren't, I would say, I'll see you in Zoom, but I, I mean, I hope I do in um, office hours. But otherwise, if those don't work for you, please shoot me an email and we'll jump into one when you need it. Um, good luck. I know it's going to be a great semester, but I will see all of you in lab this week. So that's exciting. <laughs>